Hello. In this chapter, we're going to focus on financial statements, taxes, and cash flows. We will review some of the materials that you have learned in accounting class and also focuses on the differences of how, you, how we view financial data from an accounting standpoint versus a finance standpoint. First, we're going to take a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet uh, is built based upon the concept surrounding the fundamental accounting equation which says that total asset equals liability plus owner's equity. In this class, we also want to focus on the short-term assets of a firm. And the short-term assets are often represented by networking capital. We want to distinguish between short-term versus long-term asset and short-term versus long-term liability is because the balance sheet is actually order in terms of liquidity. The term liquidity in finance and in accounting refers to how fast you can turn an asset into cash on the asset side. And on the liability side, liquidity represents how soon you have to pay off a debt. Uh, so if you take a look at a sample balance sheet, here's a balance sheet in your handout. You can see that for assets is order in terms liquidity. So the first item under current asset is cash. Cash is already cash, so you don't have to do anything, nor do you have to wait any time at all to convert it into cash. Uh, next, in terms of liquidity, is accounts receivable. Accounts receivables are money that your customers owe you, um, so the the uh, sales has already occurred, your customers simply haven't paid you yet. So that is relatively liquid because your customers should pay you soon for the merchandise or the services that you have um, provided them. Uh, next is inventory. Inventory is goods that you have on the shelf, but you haven't sold them yet. So you will take a little bit longer. Um, next will be uh, fixed of view asset or fixed assets. So this may be building equipment, they'll take longer to, to liquidate. Uh, in this simple financial statements, we don't have any intangible assets. Intangible assets oftentimes include things such as copyright, patent. Um, those a lot of times will not be, you will not be able to convert them into cash very quickly, especially in times of financial distress. And then the last item in most balance sheet in terms of intangible assets are uh, goodwill and it's very hard to convert goodwill into cash. Next, take a look at the liability and equity side. Liability, again, we start with current liability. Accounts payable is money you owe your suppliers for items that you have already purchased. So again, those will, will come due very, very soon. And then nooks payable is money that you need to pay, uh, or uh, debt that you need to pay off within one year. And all these are located under current liability. So current asset, remember from accounting, are uh, assets that you expect to convert into cash in one year or less and current liability is money that you owe that you have to pay up within a year and then next in terms of liquidity is long-term debt if you add up current liability and long-term debt you will get total liability or total debt next week in terms of liquidity we have equity Equity are owned by stockholders, and they, they are really not liquid. Um, a company raises money from stockholders um, by selling stocks to them, but they can't really demand more money. Or, or stockholders, they can if they want to cash in their stocks, they can sell it to another stockholders, but they cannot demand the company to buy the stocks back. From time to time, companies will conduct stock repurchase. Uh, those are voluntary. So, uh, so a, a invest, uh, but from the standpoint of a company, they don't have the obligation to pay back to common stockholders. They can choose to do a stock buyback, but that is like dividend. They can choose to pay dividend, but they don't have to. It is not an obligation. If they don't pay any dividend and they don't buy back any stocks from those stockholders, there are no consequences to the firm. So this is considered the least liquid. Uh, just one thing more that I want to touch in, and that is the difference between common stock and paid in surplus and also retained earnings. 
Common stock and pay in surplus, these represent the money that the firm received when the stock was originally issued. So this is the total amount that the investors pay to the firm to buy the stock directly from the company. And as you probably know, companies don't sell new stocks all the time. So this amount is unlikely going to change from year to year. Company do, companies do sell stock from um, occasionally when they need to raise a lot of money, but they do not sell stock on a regular basis. Uh, accumulated retained earning uh, come from the operation of the firm. We're going to take a look at that a little bit more in when we look at the income statement. But accumulated retained earnings, this amount you can expect it to change from year to year, as you can see here. The additional liquidity um, another important thing to look at, as we seen, uh, saw just now, is the distinction between debt versus equity. Um, we also talk, refer to the use of financial leverage. Financial leverage is how much borrowing the company does. And the proportion of a firm, what percentage of the firm is financed by debt, what per percentage of the firm is financed by equity, that is, some, that is called the financial structure or the capital structure of the firm. Okay. And then lastly, the, when we look at the balance sheet, it, we, want to, we want to make a distinction between market value and book value. And here um, it's important to, look, to remember that the balance sheet represent, represents the value of a firm that is a snapshot. So this is the how what the firm looks like in at a single moment in time. So if you look at a typical balance sheet, you would say balance sheet as of a particular date. So this is as of December 31st in year zero. And these are the value associated with the firm on December 31st in year zero. So what does that mean? That is the value of the firm on December 31st that day. Let's take a single item, inventory. The inventory for the firm on December 31st in year zero is $420,000. That means on that day after the firm is done with business, you close the door, you count every single thing that the firm own and it totaled $420,000. The next day when you open for business, if a customer comes in and buys something off of the shelf, then you no longer have $420,000 worth of item in your inventory. So that number, $420,000, is valid only on that day, only on December 31st in year zero. Um, you, can think, you can see the same thing for cash. Uh, the cash balance is only true for that day. The moment you make another deposit, a customer buys an item from you, that number will change as well. So, um, and that is why when we look at balance sheet, you'll see that most companies, when they when they show their balance sheet, they will show they will show balance sheet for two years. Their balance sheet on December 31st in year zero last year, the balance sheet at on December 31st in year one this year. And so that you can see that when you see the difference between year one and year two, you can see the change in the firm. So the change in, sometimes this is called the change in financial position, meaning where the firm stand, you can see that the firm increases balance by five, uh, cash balance by $5,000. And you can see the similar changes um, that it increased is plan and equipment, which means that the firm has purchased more equipment. Um, you saw that the firm did not issue any stock, so there's no change here. The firm also uh, did not change any long-term liability, so borrowing, there's no change there. Um, and so this is what, why we have two columns in the balance sheet. We are focusing on the change. And that brings us back to the concept of book value. So if you think about the book value, this is the value we are presenting uh, the, on the balance sheet that is based on the original purchase price um, and other accounting rules. 
So the book value is a historic record of the value of the asset and liability of the firm. Market value, just the name imply, is the current value. So the if uh, book value is important from a, from an accounting standpoint because you want to trace and make sure that you have an accurate historic record of the firm's um, purchases and um, disposal of assets. Uh, on the other hand, if you're looking at the financial data in order to make information uh, in order to make decision about the future direction of the firm, market value is more relevant. So that's the difference between market value and book value. Unfortunately, for most financial statement, the accounting firm, the, the firm will report, and then and an accounting auditor will certify our book values. Um, it's much harder to get obtain market value. Uh, there are financial specialists whose whose job is to uh, is to provide valuation estimate for companies. This concludes our discussion of the balance sheet. In the next video, we're going to talk about the income statement.